Hello guys, we're going right on in into, uh, there is something that is a little controversy. We're going to go into that, we're going to read verses saying who does not go into heaven and whose prayers God hears and whose prayers he doesn't. We're only going to do a few verses, so these are going to be little series, little parts, and then we're going to get in deeper to about what hell is like. And we're going to discuss certain types of sins as we go. But first, let's read from Psalms chapter 1, verse 5. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. There you go. So Psalms chapter 1, homework. Now, next one. John 9 and 31. You're wanting to know whether God hears you or not. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. There's your answer. So if you're not saved, which is repentant, trusting fully in Jesus Christ and living a holy life for him, through him, then you're not being heard. If you know it's a sin and you're still doing it, then you're backslidden. And you need to ask God for forgiveness and get out of that sin. But, the only way to do that is through Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit. God hears the prayers of the righteous. 1 Peter 3.12 For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, which is his children, because they're righteous through Jesus Christ. And his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. You can find this stuff on Google. Now, what kind of people go to hell? Know ye not the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. So anybody doing anything fleshly that is not of God and is not trusting in Jesus Christ, is not living for him, and has not come to the realization that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and been washed by the blood of Jesus and um, been born again of spirit, then, you, then they're not going to be going. So that's why we have to pray for lost souls and go, actually get out there and talk to them. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. And that effeminate word, I looked into that, and that was actually, um, it says, is the manifestation of traits in a boy or a man that are more often associated with feminine behavior, mannerism, style, or gender roles rather than with traditionally masculine behavior. So instead of acting like a man and being a man, they've decided that they want to be a woman. Um... So we're going back, and nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. So here's that. Let's just see that for a second. And these are the ones that will not go. So it says, when they will not inherit the kingdom of God, or they were no wise enter. When you read that in a verse, that means they will not be going to heaven. So you really need to pray for them, okay? Now, lavishness is a word that I actually ran across, and um, I'm going to read that. What I found out that meant, that meant that it was a, um, overly sexual active in, like, um, an ungodly manner, would be, so to speak. Let me, that's about as clear as that gets. Um, people doing continual things, all they want to do is that. Uh, so prostitution, whoremongers, men and women, all that. It doesn't matter who you are. Now, that word, what I looked into, and it led up, um, and actually something I want you to know and be aware of. Pornography, be sure to understand the definition. No. Be sure to understand the definition. Know what is evil about it. It is lavishness. lavishness. It glorifies sexual relationship at a side of marriage. It causes people to commit adultery in their heart. It corrupts the heart and defiles the person. 
Don't underestimate its danger. It is addictive. It is destroying marriages. Many young people are being ensnared. It hardens the heart. Take preventive measures. Be ready for a war. Never assume you are immune from the danger. Guard your heart. Pray. Look for a way to escape. Seek help from brethren, which is those in the body of Christ. So I need to read this through this a little better. It's a little bit smaller print, sorry. Now, backbiters, haters of God, disrespectful, proud boasters, um, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, which is unforgiving, um, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So they're, they enjoy seeing them do these things and they're okay with it. And they're not telling them that's wrong. So if you are being a partaker saying that these things are okay, then you are just as guilty. Be bold. So there's that. But you know, there is an upside to every bit of this. And before we get to it, let's say, so First Peter 2 and 1, these are the things you've got to realize what to do. So rid yourselves of all malice, which is evil intent, a desire to harm, deceit, concealment or distortion of the truth fraud or cheating hypocrisy saying one thing and doing another envy to wrongly desire what someone else has to make harmful false statements about another that's slander sorry slander to make harmful false statements about another which has to do with what we did yesterday about gossip so this goes in line with everything we talked about okay now, this being said today, if you are under conviction, praise God, if you need help, come come praying and fasting. We'll leave an email address in the description below to where you can contact us for a duo chat meeting to set you up to do a deliverance prayer for the sin to be set free. But you also have to do your part, which is to come fasting and asking God to help you. Um, and... Just a little reminder about yesterday's message. If they gossip about everyone to you, then they are gossiping about you too. Don't forget that. So stay out of the way of those things. And it also tells us in the Word of God, Whoever goes about slandering reveals secrets, therefore do not associate with a simple babbler. Proverbs 20 and 19. Stay away from that. You can love them from a distance. But here's something that I want you to hear, Okay. You ready? This is the positive side. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Okay? And that said, brings me to a very famous verse that we need to understand. And we need to understand the verse under it. Because I want you to hear this and I want you to understand what God is revealing right now. He's telling you, yes, these things will send you there, but there is a way out, and that's Jesus Christ. John 3 and 16. Okay? 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And then verse 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Okay? So, he didn't come to condemn you. He come to set you free. He come to get you out of this mess. Okay? Jesus is your way out. He is your answer to everything, and he is the only one that can set you free. No preacher, no teacher, nobody coming to set you free. Okay? Only God can set you free. That's through Jesus Christ. Now, here's another one. Romans 2 and 4. Or despitest thou the richness of his goodness and forbearance, which is dealing with us, and long suffering for a long time. And that is um, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. 
God leads you to repentance through Jesus Christ. Get a hold of us if you need it. May God be with you. And know that these types of people that we talked about today are the type that do go to hell if they don't get repentant. If you're not repentant, that's where you're headed. I urge you to ask for forgiveness and accept the truth of God's word. And um, repenting is when you ask for forgiveness. You tell God what it is that you've done. And you... Confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord. You believe it in your heart and you begin to live a holy, sanctified life, trusting fully in Jesus Christ.